Hello everybody, welcome to the Canadian Shield, your trusted source for analysis. My name is Sterling, I'm your host. The far left is coming hard and heavy after free speech, between all of the legislation that they feel they have the right to silence you, and now they're having these, uh, every time I turn around it's Russian bought this and Russian bought that. And of course they're trying to scare you, or they're trying to make you think that they're going to protect your freedom by taking your freedom away. They're trying to think, make you think that they're going to protect your system by removing the system that you, you have come to depend on, come to rely on. They talk about Russian bots, but nobody is mentioning how many bots the WEF might be, might be manufacturing. Nobody's talking about that. Nobody's talking about how many far left bots are being manufactured by various news organizations all over the planet. I mean, we all know there's a concerted effort because it's something that's being discussed in, you know, all the free countries of the world. Of course, it doesn't have to be discussed in the other countries because those countries are not free. Those countries do not experience democracy. So they get their um, internet locked down all the time and nobody is there to defend them. Nobody can say anything. A couple of things before we get into it. I recently purchased a, an upgraded my system and I did it from a reputable supplier. So it got here, you know, through the delivery systems. And it seems that the video card is defective. I have been fighting with it for a week now and I've got the call into their tech guy, person, people, whatever it may be. So hopefully they'll be able to solve the problem remotely, though I don't believe that that's after the exhaustive attempts that I have made. Probably not. So you'll have to bear with me. That's part of the reason I have the microphone up so high, because then at least you won't have to see me being out of sync. The other thing is that um, freedom of speech is, uh, I'm an absolutist on freedom of speech. It's my hill to die on, as the expression goes. Now I'll get into that more, because I'm going to have to be talking about this more and more often, now that, they ha now that the far left has exposed their uh, agenda. So we're going to listen to the Privacy and Ethics Committee. So we have a situation where, um, you know, we're talking about the spread of, uh, of misinformation. And we had uh, two uh, political parties. We had the Liberals and the NDP. They went out and the media printed um, as sure as fact that um, without having verified the claims that this was uh, something that was paid for um, and there, was, uh, there were allegations that it was orchestrated through foreign state actors. Now look at What he's referring to there is when the um, us conservatives were con accused of making bots because they had a great show up north. <clears throat> and then it turns out that um, after, an, after an independent outfit did a search, they realized that there was no way. And his argument was, if the press came out and printed it, if the press hadn't have said anything, then the story would have got no traction. But because the far left came out and started to try and criticize and say that everybody is on the right is using bots, that it gained millions of impressions. And then, of course, when, they, when the truth came out, there was no chase down by the press. The press didn't come out and say, oh, we made a mistake or looks, we shouldn't have done that. You know, and so now people are left with one impression without ever having to... Um, say anything back and I always like to tell people the uh, best line in one of the, the hip song was shout out to the hip was uh, nobody cares what you didn't do so the press doesn't amplify that or anything of that nature and because the far left is in control of all of the media they have that extra kick and the rest of us are just trying to talk to one another in normal ways that are not involving all of the drama all the hysteria because most of us are not attracted to that kind of lifestyle we just want the truth we want the facts and we want to be left alone and the, apparently the far left can't withstand that they can't understand that and so he brought that part out and asked the um, individual what they thought about it but the point that you and I need to see is that the far left controlling the press and controlling the media tried to get everybody to switch they found this story and then they tried to use that story to sway your vote and then they said, hey, wait a minute. Now this next lady, <clears throat> MP Khalid, she's uh, quite a character. Listen to how she frames this particular incident. 
Thank you uh, very much, uh, Mr. Chair, and thank you to the witnesses for, for being here today and for your, uh, for your very uh, important testimony. Now, I just building on some of the, uh, the comments that, uh, that uh, my honorable colleague uh, had talked about, I don't think that it's about um, which and who political party is, has done anything maliciously or not. I think when we're talking about foreign interference, it is about who is vulnerable to it. And we saw that the bots example that Mr. Barrett had raised was that it was a prime example of how a political party in Canada is vulnerable to being used by Russian bots to disrupt democracy in Canada. And so uh, I, I want to, to question you. I mean, I, yeah, Professor Caulfield, you had talked about um, specifically what is uh, what are the tools that we can use to prevent that kind of interference within our democratic systems. Now, it's not lost on me the irony of her saying that when the bots were released, somehow it, they're interfering, but if the system hadn't have done anything about it, if the if the far left, if the liberals and the and their media um, puppets hadn't have amplified the story, it would have gone nowhere, and she would have been the very same thing would have been this very same person would have been saying, oh, that's just a conspiracy. What we're looking at here is an attempt to try and tell you that she's doing it for your best interest, and of course she is not. This is the same person who came on into this committee last year and complained that MP Brock said you know mean tweets. This is the same person who's losing her seat by all accounts. This is the same person who's trying to silence all of the critics in, of her in her particular writing. There is no assistance in going to be ever gained from limiting your ability to speak freely. I'll get into that. But I just wanted to show you how she's trying to say, oh, no, well, what we're doing, we're doing it for the conservatives too. Really? Because now I didn't hear any of you come out and say, hey, this was a mistake. And now we can learn from it. No, no. It's like, oh, let's stop Russian bots. But there's a lot of far left bots. In fact, it stands to reason that the story that was predicated on it was the far left bots trying to attack the conservatives. I'll get into that. Now I'm going to show you the NDP. And, oh, no, first I want to show you what, um, one of the conservatives just, just eviscerates the witness. It's, it's, it's really funny. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Mr. Caulfield, how much money have you received from the Trudeau Foundation? Personally? No, in the way of research funding. Uh, in 2012, I was uh, honored to receive a Trudeau um, Fellowship, which is a peer-reviewed um, research award that um, is awarded. Um, just how much? To, just how fun. much? Uh, I, in 2010, I think it was 200000 and that was for, you know, research purposes. So in 2012, he got hired full-time. In 2010, they gave him two hundred grand. He goes on to say that in 2021, he, he volunteered for Trudeau's uh, um, uh, think tank on whether or not what they should do about the, uh, you know, the the COVID and the, the shot that was associated with that. And of course he said, Oh, I didn't get any money for that. I just did that volunteered that out of, the, out of the kindness of my heart. And it's important to see that the bias in this individual who's, who's written a book about how bad the conservatives are and who's written a book. I mean, when you listen to his interview, he mentions the United States every single time. He never talks about Canada because for some reason, the far left is obsessed I mean, they are like fanboys of the United States of America. They talk about it constantly. Um, he asked him about how much money he had made, and the guy tripped and stumbled, and, and he spent the, the, the second half of the question just trying to explain to everybody that though he's gotten hundreds of thousands of dollars from the Trudeau government, that's not jaded his opinion on, on misinformation. And now the NDP guy comes out and says this. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. And I want to thank Mr. Cooper for providing a, a textbook example of a growing anti-intellectualism, one that would seek to kind of attack the expertise of uh, subject matter experts. Subject matter experts? Why is he a subject matter expert? Because Trudeau's government, because the Trudeau Foundation, which is a corrupt, which we know has already taken money from China, 
Is that why he's a subject matter expert? Or is he a subject matter expert because he, he agrees with your far left policies? What I just think is amazing is how this guy, this NDP fellow Green, I think his name is, is trying to convince you that there should be censorship while trying to censor the conservative for asking a straightforward, simple, straightforward question. It's all he asked. How much money have you gotten from this government? How much money have you gotten from the Trudeau organization? And the guy stumbled and tripped and, and all of that stuff. So on the, on the subject of subject matter experts, subject matter experts, I'm old enough to remember when, they got, when the doctor would tell you that cigarettes were good for you, that if you <laughs> had a chest cold, have a cigarette, that'll clear it up for you. Don't go telling me. I mean, I was, I was elbows deep in that where, you know, they used to smoke in the car and then they tell you, don't roll down the window because it's cold outside. And doctors, four to five doctors approved nicotine. There was no such thing as it being bad for you. We can go back to Galileo being charged with uh, heresy for saying that the world was round because the subject matter experts of the time decided that the earth was not round, the word that the earth was flat. There is so many examples of when these experts have decided that, you know, I mean, especially the medical and scientific fields, I mean, oftentimes there's a process. There's a, th there was a time when the experts said that the way to solve the active volcano was to make sacrifices to it. There was a time when experts said that when a woman was having her visitor, she should be locked in a room. I mean, the, the amount of experts that are disproved over the course of history. Of course, now you say this to MP Green and you say this to MP Kelly and they'll both try to label me a conspiracy theorist, right? Trudeau will stand up in the, in, in the House of Commons and try to say that people shouldn't listen to the far right. Now, I'm not far right. I'm center right. And that is because I have a real belief in economic stability and the left can't balance a checkbook to save our lives. I think that we see that everywhere you go. However, I, um, that's not the subject matter in this, in this conversation. This MP Green is trying to s smear uh, the MP for asking the question when he was simply asking the guy how much money he had made. And then MP Green's mind saw that as negative. You see, MP Green's mind saw that. He just said, how much money have you made? He didn't accuse the guy. He didn't say anything. He just said, how much money have you made from the Trudeau government? The guy answered the question, and then MP Green decided that it looked bad, and then let the cat out of the bag that he realized that it looked bad by trying to smear the person asking the question, which is how we attack freedom of speech, right? It's not the way that MP Green heard it for some reason. No, 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 it can't be him. It's got to be something else. Now, I am going to have to discuss this more and more. Without freedom of speech, we are all under the control of the despots. And I don't care. There's no reason to limit it. There's no reason. What you have to do is start listening better. What you have to do is stop taking everything so personally. I mean, the, the fact that the, the most powerful people in the country are demanding that the most people without anything have to be careful how they talk should show you the kind of caliber of personality that we're dealing with. It should show you the lack of fortitude that these quote-unquote leaders possess that the fragility is not a leadership quality. You can't hear it. So what are you going to do when you're dealing with other countries? What are you going to do when you're dealing with an adversary that you cannot imprison? You'll shatter like so much, you know, glass. And then you'll throw the rest, you'll lead the rest of us down this path of, of problems because you're fixated and wrapped up in your ego. I think that if your leader is trying to tell you that we need to silence speech, we need to elect a new leader. And that's all there is to it. I mean, the, and one of the biggest reasons, of course, is that they're going through this is because no matter how hard they try, they can't convince people not to vote the way that they think in their mind, right? I mean, they, they're losing, they've lost France, Germany, Hungary, Austria, Poland. That's just to name the ones that I can think of. I think they might even... I think one of the uh, Scandinavian countries is also going right way. I forget what, Sweden, I think. And so they are freaking out 
because the it's only the the free world that they want. They don't care about the rest of it. Only the free world has democracy. Only the free world has free speech. And the idea that they, we should allow these people who are so fragile that they can't hear themselves be called overweight, who are so fragile that they can't be criticized in the slightest way. This is not a leadership quality. This is not the character that a leader has. In fact, it, it's the character of, of the weakest among us, not the strongest among us. And why do we allow the weakest among us to lead? Why are we allowing people who are afraid of you having your own opinion on a matter and saying it out loud, who are terrified of it? Why are we letting them say their opinion because they think that they're a leadership? Do you see how that leads to a road of entitlement? Do you see how that leads to a road of suppression by your own government where you are now the enemy of the people who are in charge and they are no longer leaders they are oppressors also they they, they don't have to hear the truth we can't have that that's just not the country that we want to have that's not the people that we want to be that's not the world that we want all right i'm gonna wrap here i want to thank you for listening i'll talk to you next time